Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our 2020 World Missions launch, where this week we're going to be looking at planting hope. And to uh, just get us into the right framework for the week ahead, I just want to quickly talk about why do we have the World Missions Conference? And there's three key purposes to this. So the first thing is uh, God made some promises to Abraham, which then he reiterated all the way throughout the Old Testament, which came to a fulfillment in Christ and the commission that he gave us as his followers. He called the nation of Israel to be a light to the nations. And that was their commission. And as followers of Jesus, that hasn't changed. It's still our task today. So each year we stop and we pause and we reflect on what God is saying to us in the Bible. Uh, as Norm Blackby reminded us last year, God is on mission. And as followers of Christ, he invites us to join him. So that's the first thing that we try and do with the World Missions Conference. The second thing is to uh, challenge us to be active in mission. And we can do that in a number of ways. We can do that by praying. We can do that by financial support. We can do that through engagement with our mission partners. And there's all sorts of ways we can do that. The other element is, as a church, we have had a long tradition of raising people up and sending them to mission in all sorts of ways, be it into vocational ministry um, or, uh, in many instances, overseas to serve in other cultures, in other lands. And we want to continue this and encourage and inspire people to give consideration to how God may be calling them in that respect. And then thirdly, we need to raise support for our mission partners. So just like I don't mind getting up in the morning and finding cornflakes and porridge in the cupboard, our mission partners also have a whole host of requirements in order to be able to do their tasks, and some of that requires money. And so it's been great to be part of Fig Tree for so long where the mission tradition in my own experience is more than 50 years old and, uh, and I have no doubt that it goes way beyond the uh, beginning of my appreciation of what Fig Tree has always done. So it's great to be a continuation of that long and rich culture and to have the opportunity to actually be able to get our fingerprints around the globe in the name of Christ. So with that background and what we're trying to achieve, Ian... Why is this conference so important to us here at Fig Tree? Uh, thank you, Peter. And it's great to actually be sitting here with Pete. Uh, we started this uh, over seven years ago, and this year will be different. Because you're watching this online, you know we're sitting in an empty auditorium. But brothers and sisters, all the flags are up around us, and it is just a good reminder about the role we are called to. Why is mission important? Mission has always been important to Fig Tree, not just local mission, but overseas mission. Wherever we go, we're called to be on mission. It just helps us lift our eyes to what God is doing around the world. I love the different projects, the different speakers we have. It just keeps stirring our hearts about the role we have to either pray, to give, or as Peter just shared, about going. Often in our own context as a church, people are challenged about what they are doing with their life. And the challenge often is don't waste your life. The greatest thing you could do is actually be on mission for God. And so that's one of the things we keep highlighting here. It's a great week. I love the week. It's actually one of the highlights of our ministry year and our calendar year. It'll be different. We know that. But still, we get to hear what God is doing around the world. And also, as Pete shared, to actually encourage other partners who are doing it tough to, to remind them that, in fact, we're there with them. They've gone to places we can't go, but it's just a good reminder that we're in this together. So it's fantastic. It's hard to believe it's been a year since we've been with you. You have been on our hearts in our prayers this last year. Uh, we have such fond memories, so many wonderful people, friendships that we made. Uh, but more important, just that we got to join together with you as a church and just get to feel your heart for missions. And you encouraged us as well as we've been looking at how we were involved in missions this last year. Langdon asked us to send a short message to you as you start your this year's missions conference. And so we just wanted to let you know that we are praying for you. You are a very special church. Your heart for missions, your love for God, your love for each other, you didn't remember it's unique. God is doing something very wonderful among you and he wants to use you again this year to share his good news. What a wonderful opportunity is you join together to raise funds, to look at what God has in store for you. 
But it'll be exciting again to hear this next year all that God does through Fig Tree and those that you're, you're partnered with. Uh, we want to give you a, just a quick update on what we're doing, and I'm going to ask, let Dana tell you about our family and our kids, and, and then we want to pray for you. We, um, we were moving when we were with you last year, and we got into our, our home and established at our new place. The kids are all doing well. Emily is now in Colorado working on her graduate degree. Douglas finished uh, up his undergraduate degree and is applying to medical schools and living with us right now, which we're really thankful for. Anne has been home with us since um, COVID started back in February, March timeframe. And we've thoroughly enjoyed having her back home. She'll be leaving to go back to university in a couple of weeks. We're all healthy and we're safe and we're thankful. Um, for those things. We are really praying for you as you go to your conference, and we really wish we could be there with you again. Good day, you mob, Love Fig Tree Anglican Church. I'm Greg Anderson. I'm the Bishop of the Northern Territory up here in Darwin. I'm so pleased that you're partnering us, partnering with us there at Fig Tree, particularly in a project around evangelism in our diocese. Um, we really want evangelism to be stronger, and particularly in our remote Aboriginal communities in Arnhem Land. But your theme for the missions conference is planting hope, and I want to tell you about a couple of things that make me hopeful, because God is at work here among us. So the first is a forthcoming ordination. There's an Aboriginal guy who we expect to be ordained in mid-October out in the parish of Mulcor, or the old Roper River Mission. Um, he's a guy that I've been looking at for probably the last 20 years because of his stability, his knowledge of the Bible, his love for people, his ability to be a peacemaker. He's completed his studies at Numalinya. He's been through our discernment process, and uh, all of the ducks are lined up. So I'm expecting that he'll be ordained and will be a great leader for that community. And a second thing, um, which was done because of the coronavirus um, situation where the Arnhem Land communities were in very strict lockdown, and so we weren't able to have physical contact with them at all, we um, put some energy into setting up a Facebook page called Virtual Diocese NT, Virtual Diocese NT, where we were able to post messages, prayer material, um, encouragement, and we know that many people in the Arnhem Land communities who are on their mobiles and on Facebook were able to connect with that and really be encouraged by it. So we're so grateful for your interest in us and your partnership with us, and I pray that during the World Missions Conference your eyes will again be lifted to God's horizons. God bless you. This time last year, we had a wonderful time taking a team from Fig Tree Anglican all the way to Indonesia, to Samarang, where the team got to share the gospel, train people to share the gospel at Anaki University, and got to visit and make so many wonderful friends. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we couldn't take a team back this year, but I want to introduce you to Ingrid. Ingrid uh, Resmol, you are a friend of Fig Tree. You were with us last year. You would have been helping us organize our team to come. Tell us what is it like uh, in Indonesia right now with COVID? Now we are still struggling with the, uh, the numbers of uh, people infected. It's still in the higher number and the economic also going down. Many people infected by this COVID situations. And also in the ministry, church, we are still doing online. So that is our yeah, you know, our fight now for this time. Uh, we praise God that in this time, as Christians, uh, we we really uh, see that many people uh, open their their heart to help each other in these situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is that impacting ministry? Uh, the beginning of this uh, every year we have a, a yearly schedule, but this year all schedules cancelled. 
uh, we close our EE center, all the training postponed, so we can't do we we we, we do nothing for like for conventional training. What I love about you guys is that it never stops you. Before COVID, we have like God prepare us for all the resources. So when uh, we have to quit all the training, we can start online training uh, quickly. So from uh, since April, we have uh, online training. We train many people. So until now, we have trained about 700 young people around Indonesia and uh, we can see that they really excited and they're really courage to sharing the gospel for their friends many there's many great testimony that bless us so this pandemic cannot stop us to sharing the gospel uh, there is a movement in uh, many people to sharing the gospel by video call uh, yeah by all the social media and of my friends they can reach their Muslim friends uh, uh, that before it's it's not easy, but this pandemic is like open doors for uh, many of them to share in the gospel. So, Ingrid, how can we pray for Indonesia? So please pray for our government. So God give them wisdom to to handle these situations and pray for the economic also here that's impact many lives especially for christians so um, we can see many people struggling with their life uh, pray for church so they can see the situation and take the opportunity to sharing god's love so please pray for all our leaders for all young people that have been equipped so they can have a courage to sharing the gospel uh, in these situations yeah Ingrid, thank you so much for joining us and sharing with us. On behalf of your family at Fig Tree, uh, you're in our prayers and uh, we really appreciate you sharing with us. Thank you so much, Fig Tree. We also pray for you so God can use you as a um, church, as a person, as a family to bless others in these situations in this world. God bless you guys. And um, ordinarily tonight, we'd be uh, in the auditorium. Well, we are in the auditorium, but there'd be 150, 200 other people here with us. And, on, and t t tonight, we've just got Langdon and Greg. But having said that, normally too, uh, at this event, we would have an interview with our speaker. And, and through that, we'd become introduced to the person that's going to speak into our lives for the rest of the week. Simon's a great brother in Christ. In fact, Simon is the head of Moore College Mission. Simon actually himself is a former missionary, and we had him come down and head up a week-long mission uh, here at Fig Tree a few years ago. Uh, he's a good brother. He's very supportive, uh, Peter, of what we do down here, supportive of Fig Tree's engagement in mission. Uh, he's a, a great man of God. He's very passionate about mission around the world and locally. So it's going to be a great week uh, to have Simon with us, and I'm very much looking forward to sitting under his teaching. I'm talking to uh, our guest speaker for this year's World Missions Conference, which is going to be very different. Uh, Simon, I'm going to get you to introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, so tell us uh, who you are, are you married with a family, and what do you do? Sure. Uh, yes, my name's Simon Gillam. I'm married to Margie. Uh, we have two children, Madeline and Noah. They're both young adults. Uh, Maddie's a high school teacher. Uh, Noah is a pastoral care worker for Anglicare. Uh, and my wife, Margie, works for CMS, um, recruiting missionaries. Okay, fantastic. Now, you are a former missionary who's currently the head of Moore College Mission Department, which is a huge department. Let's just go with that line. It's a massive department. We can meet in a phone booth if there were such things anymore. <laughs> uh, why the change from being on mission to coming to Moore College? What I was convinced of was that if I could send two people out on mission from Moore College, I will have doubled what I could have done. Okay. Uh, so I'm really here uh, trying to raise up people who will go out to the nations. Um, okay. And after I've done it for a little while, I want to go back myself. <laughs> Mate, we're very much looking forward to having you with us uh, in a different way. Uh, this is our seventh World Missions Conference. What's on your heart in regards to what you're going to share uh, over the coming weeks uh, from the 9th of August about world mission? Yeah, what I'm really keen to do is to establish a biblical theology for mission. Why does the Bible say, or what does the Bible say about mission and why it's important? 
how central is it to the life of an ordinary Christian? Is it a peripheral thing? Or, and obviously, I don't think it's a peripheral thing, uh, but I want to try and convince people from the Bible that that is so. Uh, the other thing is, I think we in Australia have been blessed in all kinds of ways, and there are particular ways that we can serve global mission. Uh, so I'm really keen uh, to explore that with people uh, so that we all might find our place in God's great work of bringing everything under, under the feet of Jesus. Oh, mate, that, that sounds fantastic. We're very much looking forward to it. Just in, for those who are watching this, Simon and myself are going to have a long interview on the Monday night, the 10th of August, where we really will be able to dig deep on mission, but also into Simon and his work. Brother, we are in this COVID season. I think our people are interested to know what's the impact of been on you. Where do you see church heading in the future? Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? Um, uh, so we've struggled at the college with uh, talking to empty rooms. It's a terrible way to teach, uh, talking to an empty room or a computer screen. It's awful. Uh, but I think we have learned things. So there are ways in which we have been more connected with people around the world. Uh, so at this time, I've been supporting friends of mine in Namibia and Madagascar and other places that uh, I've probably talked to them more because of this than I would have otherwise done. And that's true of my local church as well, that uh, I've had different kinds of connections with people. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure how it'll all shake out, mm. but I think we are going to relate and communicate differently on the other side. Yeah. And technology is going to play a part in that. Uh, fantastic. I probably have one more question because Mocklam is part of our projects for this year. Give us some insight. How do we understand this word, Mocklam, on the world of more college and mission? Yeah, so Mocklam started as more college in Latin America, um, but it's, uh, it's actually grown above and beyond anything that more college could have hoped to do. It really is a local Latin American ministry now. Uh, and they have well over a thousand people studying God's word through resources wow. that have been produced at Moore College, but translated into Spanish. And are being, um, they're being served by many people who have trained at Moore College, but are now living and working in Latin America and training up locals to do that work. It's, it is a very exciting work. Mate, well, it sounds fantastic. We very much look forward to having with us and indeed uh, sharing this video and sharing on the Monday night and hearing from you. More than likely people watching this are sitting down having a meal together. So uh, we all are putting our hands together, thanking you for sharing. We look forward to seeing you soon. You take care, brother, and blessings to you and your family. Thank you, and you too. God bless. Take care. God bless. Yeah. So Ian, as people watch and find out, how are we encouraging people to respond to the Missions Conference this year, particularly given the slightly different format that we have? It's, it is a little bit different at that level. Yeah, it is. Th thanks, Pete. It's a great question. Uh, brothers and sisters, there are four things I want to share with you. Firstly, you understand that it's going to be different this year. I don't really need to explain to you why you know why. And actually, for all of us... Even Peter and I feel this, I'm going to miss the way we've done it because it's had high engagement, high connection, but you understand that we have to do it differently. Most of the week will be online, so secondly, watch. To understand what's happening, you're going to have to watch what's going on so you can understand, you can actually grow, you can pray. So that's really important. So watch, listen out for the activities every day. You and I know, brothers and sisters, there's actually not much on TV. Uh, Big Brother would have finished, The Voice is finished, Netflix hasn't got any new... Like, come on, what else are you going to do in that week except engage with what we're doing here at Fig Tree? So do that well. Thirdly, pray. Every time you hear from someone sharing what they're doing, whether it be in the indigenous work or E, Hope for Kids, when it finishes, just pray for them. There'll be opportunities to pray for the week, so that's really important, number three. And number four, yep, I'm your senior pastor. I'm asking you to give to the projects. Uh, they're the same five projects as last year. There's no booklet this year. All the information, all the giving is going to be online. Understand that. Langdon and the team will get the information out to us over the coming weeks about how to do that. I do not know where you're at at this stage. The reality of the last four to five months has had an impact on everyone in ways we'd never, would never have expected, especially financially. Yet, others have been blessed in this season financially. Uh, Rhonda and I, again, will make sure we give to the projects that really touch our heart. And there's 
all of them are there, it really encourages us. You'll have a chance to give. There'll be projects. There'll be a pool as well that you can give to. We're going to break it up percentage-wise, and so everyone is allocated an appropriate amount. Watch out for that. More detail will come in the next few a few weeks. It's going to be great. I really, you know, the project's are always encouraging. So look, the week is great. Because of the season we've had, this week will really remind you of what God is doing. And again, it might even lift you out of the slump you may be in because of when you hear of other stories. Who are the partners that we're going to try to sponsor this year? So this year we've got five partners that are through the missions committee. We've uh, thought are uh, a fulfilment of our vision and mission for uh, our partnerships. They went to parish council and the wardens who uh, ratified those as being the way that we're going to continue. So the five are firstly Mocklam, so more college across Latin America. And um, at Fig Tree Anglican level, we've been involved in South America for a few decades now, and um, Graham and Patty Scarrett were link missionaries of ours for many, many years. And then, uh, and then we picked it up again a couple of years ago, started talking about it, and then last year we took them on as financial partners as well. And we had Adrian and an Anita here last year speaking with us as well about what they're doing up in Bolivia. Um, so they're a partner really worth investing in. Spanish is now the second most spoken language across the globe. Um, and, and yet there is very, very little um, Christian material, Christian training material and few Christian books as we would understand that in those languages. And so Mocklam is uh, very much at the fore of trying to close that gap. Fig Tree, one of our great projects this year, uh, we're continuing to support the work of Mocklam and to hear more about uh, Mocklam, what that's all about, uh, we are blessed enough to have Peter Shaw with us. Peter, welcome uh, to the Fig Tree Mission Conference launch uh, on Saturday night. Uh, tell us a bit about, uh, firstly tell us a bit about yourself and then tell us a bit about Mocklam. So uh, I've been married, I, I am married. Married to Sarah for 27 years. We have three daughters, one here in Australia. Uh, we're just on home assignment at the moment. Um, so one at university, she's second year university, one just about to start in February and one just easing back into halfway through year 10. Uh, so we've been in Mexico with CMS for 12 years. You're on home assignment and tell us a bit about Mocklam. So Mocklam is, a, is an institution or a group that offers the Moore College um, distance education courses. So you might know it as the, the PTC. Um, we offer that in, in Spanish uh, in about a dozen or so Spanish speaking countries around the world. Um, we have people, uh, I, I'm in, I was in Mexico. Um, we have CMS people with Mocklam uh, working in Peru, Chile, Bolivia, and in Spain as well. Why, uh, in those nations, why is it so significant to have training like PTC? What impact does that make? Uh, two things. The first is that uh, the majority of pastors don't have any formal theological education. Uh, there's, there's a few reasons for that. Um, but, but going and training at a, at a Bible college or a seminary is, is really not much of an option. Uh, so, so with Mocklam, we are able to, uh, in a sense, take the theological education to them so they're able to be bit better prepared to, to do the work they are doing. Um, the, the second thing is um, the, the basis of, of the Mocklam courses is, is that the Bible is one complete book. And so when we read any passage in the, in the Bible, we need to be thinking about it in the context of the whole Bible, particularly in the context of Jesus. So what does this passage teach us about Jesus? How do we understand Jesus better from this passage? Um, that is a, a radically different way of reading the Bible for many many of the people we are training, and if you think about uh, if you think about the Bible in that way, it takes it tends to take you away from legalism or moralism, which can be the flavour of, of ministry in Latin America. So, so kind of uh, sociologically, in that we can take the training to the people rather than them having to go to the training, and we, we're helping them read their Bibles in, in a way which helps them understand Jesus and helps them preach grace. Wow. Uh, last year, we started uh, sharing with the church about the opportunity to support Mocklam and mm. uh, to develop the online, online diploma training. And I guess with COVID, it's become even more significant. Yes. Just tell us 
Uh, just, just briefly, what's the impact of that training? Uh, the impact is that uh, it gives people the chance to, to really uh, get stuck in at a, at a deep level that they, they haven't had another opportunity to do. So, so we've developed the, the certificate level through Moore College and now uh, with your generosity, we're working on developing the, the next level up, which is the diploma level. Uh, for, for most of the people we are going to be offering this course to and who are going to be participating, this is going to be a big step up uh, in terms of their studies, in terms of their thinking. Um, but they will respond really well. They will, they will really appreciate it. Um, it's, it's more lack of opportunity uh, that has meant they haven't done something like this before. So we're looking forward to being able to offer that. Awesome. Well, we're glad that uh, you're able to um, have the timing to be on home assignment and while we're doing our missions conference. Uh, on Monday night at 7.30, uh, you're going to be uh, down in Fig Tree and you're going to be uh, joining Simon Gillam on the couch here with, uh, behind me with uh, Ian Barnett. And we're going to hear more from you about uh, Mocklam. And also on that night, people are going to have a chance to text in questions. So uh, if people hear from you, have a question, they can do that as well. So Monday night, 7.30 on Fig Tree TV on YouTube Premiere. Thank you so much, Peter. We're looking, forward, we're looking forward to Monday night. I'm looking forward to it too. See you then. Awesome. Thanks, Peter. Our next partnership is one that I think we've all been inspired by since a couple of years ago when we had Neville Naden come back here to Fig Tree and speak to us after uh, a, f a few years of um, being in touch with him. And, and from that, we also had the Bible Society here talking about the uh, speaking Bible or the talking Bible that they were um, developing to put throughout Central Australia. And our congregation, something happened that year, and our congregation really uh, got on board and became quite passionate about being involved in Bible translation work into Indigenous languages. Greetings. We are here in the Bible Society headquarters up in North Sydney. Today we are filming segments for Tuesday night. Tuesday night is Indigenous night as part of the World Missions Conference. Usually we do it at the church, but Tuesday night we're pre-filming it and you can watch it at 7.30 on YouTube on Tuesday night and really excited. Jonathan Harris, you are a friend of Fig Tree. Many people will know you. You've brought us to tears with stories. We're excited. Uh, to share with you. How are you going at the moment? How are you going in COVID and all these things? Well, Langdon, I have all my three children at home. <laughs> How do you think I am? But I'm doing okay. I just got a special haircut because I'm in training for triathlon now. This makes me go faster. But um, hey, enough about me. We really appreciate uh, Fig Tree having us back again. Now, because we can't have a dinner on Saturday night and because I can't invite all my Aboriginal friends from Northern Territory to the Tuesday night and also the Missions Expo on the Sunday, We've actually brought it to you here in the headquarters of the Bible Society. So we've got some um, show and tell. We've got boomerangs we're going to be showing. We've got uh, things like uh, proclaimers and mega voices. This will be all part of the online expo, talking all about what's happening with the Bible Society in Nongalinga College especially. But also we have a special guest that Langham was able to interview who was. Grant Thompson, the CEO of the Bible Society, was with us today too. So you'll get to, to see some of that as well, um, talking about the Bible Society around the world as well. Peter Jones was here. He's gone now. He's here. He's gone. Uh, we'll be here as well. Uh, we're really excited. And sharing stories has been a partnership as we've been part of the developing the Pichinjara uh, Bible and uh, uh, the different things there. Very exciting. You've got in your hand. So this is the Bible I showed last year and we're very excited the fact that the translators that you're helping to train up in Darwin are helping us to finish Bibles so that they will have scripture in their own heart language. And so we've got more story, we've got follow-up story since the last message we told you about last year about the impact that we've gone back to see firsthand after that Bible has arrived in the in-country. And a big part of what we're sharing about, because a part of the missions conference is we've been supporting the equipping of Indigenous translators up at Nungalinya College. We're going to hear from Nungalinya College a bit. Uh, just give us a preview. How is that project going? 
uh, how will fig tree members supporting and praying for that project have an impact? Yeah, specifically what's fig tree supporting is the uh, diploma of, of translation. So it, it's an employment opportunity for people to do Bible translation or government work and translation work for them as well. So it really is a partnership helping Indigenous people in their area all around Australia. That's what you're helping. And we're going to talk about capacity building. We're going to talk about remote workshops that are getting more and more exciting right around the country. Places like Groot Island, Nunca, uh, Gumbalanya on Pelly, and also Alice Springs and Ernabella right around the APY lands in the centre. So what you're doing is actually sending ripples right around the country. And we just want to build this and make this grow. So we've got some great story. We've got some video footage to share and some really special stories of language revival that are going to happen uh, that we've been recording right around from Western Australia right up to Darwin. We're really grateful for the partnership with the Bible Society to let us come up and they always go above and beyond to share the stories. Uh, Jonathan, you were even willing to bring down uh, some of the guys, uh, some of our partners uh, from up in the Northern Territory down, but we just can't do it in these COVID times. So I just brought the spears and stuff so, instead. <laughs> and this is amazing. This is an 80 year old. This is a fishing spear from Groot Island, which was given to my grandparents or effectively you know, it was during a fight that they actually were given the, the spear. But wow. I, that's another story that I'll tell you about on the day. And I found also, back in the shed where I found one of the original translations my grandma wrote, we also found some other documents and stories from my grandfather's journal in that shed as well. But more about that later. You've got to join us on Tuesday night, the 11th yeah. of August. 7.30 p.m. You're going to hear these. You're going to hear much more stories. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, having you join us then. The next one is E.E. Hope for Kids. And this, um, you know, you've only got a scratch rod story from a, a kilometre away and you'll get an impassioned story as to the wonder of this ministry. Um, Ethiopia has something like 70% of the population under the age of 18 years old and, um, and they are just ripe for the gospel. And E.E. has been able to get a wonderful program on the ground over there in teaching children uh, the gospel themselves and seeing tens of thousands literally coming to Christ. But at the same time, the way EE Hope for Kids works is that those kids are actually learning how to share that story they come to understand themselves with other people. And the multiplying effect of that is phenomenal. Well, good evening. And may I join with others in welcoming you today to the 2020 Fig Tree Mission Conference. Very different format, very different uh, events to take place, but nonetheless, we're gonna focus on the fact that this church is eager and committed to making sure that we can plant hope around the world at this very great time. I have the privilege of leading a project which is called Hope for Kids. It was uh, developed in uh, 2010 and with a team of people here in Wollongong gathered together from around the world, children's specialists. And as we worked on that project, we had a strong belief that led to our mission. The belief was that we ought to be equipping children around the world to be able to know the gospel, understand it, and be able to share it with their friends. And this project came from that. And it is now, since 2010, in 70 nations and we have trained six and a half million people, children, to be able to share the gospel and taught them how to share it with their friends, which they've been very active in doing. Last year we trained 400,000 children and we hope this year in the 2020-21 year that lies ahead of us, as the world opens again, we'll be able to train at least 550, maybe 600,000 children. So I'm excited that Victory Anglican Church is partnering with us in a part of that project, which is in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a huge nation in Africa, over 110 million people. And the population, as you will hear from others, is about 40% under the age of 15. The churches there have contact with millions of children, but they need the tools to help the children to know and understand the gospel. I want to introduce you to Francis. Francis is my director for East Africa, and he will share that what he's seen happening in Ethiopia. Thanks, Francis. As EE, I am excited because of the immense opportunity that we have for the gospel in East Africa. 
take for instance Ethiopia with a population of 110 million people and 40% of these are below the age of 15 years. In the past two years that we have been in Ethiopia, we have trained, equipped in Hopeful Kids tools, key church leaders from 550 local churches. And these churches have reached up to 3 million children with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks to you, our partners, because of your giving, this has been made possible. The project in Ethiopia is a partnership between us and also the Scripture Union, One Hope, and the local churches. And it's led by a team from the Scripture Union, uh, Rebecca, who is one of their leaders, and Abraham, and you see Rebecca teaching in the background in these pictures. But it also involves taking this material and equipping others. So this past year, with the help of Fig Tree, we added five new staff to help us multiply the effect of this ministry. I hope you will join us on Wednesday as we talk more about what's being done and what could be done, and that we will share with you how we are really committed to planting hope for the children of the world. Please join us 7.30 on Wednesday as we have a new chance, another chance, to talk this through. May God bless you this week. Our dear friends who are working in Dubai, um, you know, they've just had the most amazing ministry uh, there. It's just phenomenal to see the things that are happening um, all the way um, from the book that got written, Jesus the Arab, and somehow they got one of the sheiks of the UAE to actually write the foreword in that book. I would never have believed it if I hadn't seen it. Just amazing. And then the, uh, the church services they've been able to maintain, the work that they continue to do, uh, with expats that are based in Dubai, as well as the uh, English teaching that they're doing, the Bible studies that are being run in the labour camps. And I mean, every time we hear from Warwick and Carolyn, they've just got more phenomenal stories to share with us about the way that the Spirit of God walks before them and guides and leads them in what intuitively we would think is pretty hard ground to be hoeing for the gospel. And, um, and it seems that the Spirit of God is just working in an amazing way within their ministry area um, and doing phenomenal things. So I feel like I actually get more from being partners with Warwick and Carolyn than I contribute. Every time I hear from them, I feel inspired and encouraged to, to get on and do what Jesus has called us to do. Hello, it's Warwick and Caroline here, coming to you from our living room in Dubai. Here in Dubai, we work for a large, independent international church where we have people from over 85 nationalities with us, normally when we're able to meet together in person. And we've been here for just over six years and in partnership with you that whole time. And our primary role is training leaders and speaking to people about Jesus as we help lead this large international church of over 4,000 people who meet each week you know, when COVID's not mm -hmm. knocking us about too much. All of the people who come to Dubai will have to leave. And uh, we expect between June and, June and October, 10 to 20% of them will leave this year. There's always high turnover, but this year will be worse than normal. Most people come to Dubai full of hope of the promises this city offers. We want them to leave full of the hope they can have in Jesus. People come here from all sorts of religious backgrounds and when they're away from their home culture, they're much more open to hearing about Jesus here than they would be at home. And so we see people coming to faith in Jesus all the time. And one of the things that marks them out is so many of them want to take that hope back with them when they return to their home countries. So we love equipping them to share the truth about Jesus as they go. Next Thursday, we're looking forward to spending the evening with you. We want you to meet some of the people who partner with us in planting hope and to hear their stories. We want to share the way that God is planting his word of truth in the lives of so many. We want you to see some of the fruit that God is bringing in Dubai through the work that we've, had, we've got the pleasure of doing. Mm. See, see you, you on, on Thursday. Thursday. And then finally, we've got Mitch and Ashley Deans who are leading EE Changemakers. And again, 
another really strategic ministry that has so much potential uh, into the future. Um, I'd say that it's, uh, it's early in phase two of its development. This is something that another one of our fig tree people actually got started about maybe 10 years ago even now. Um, Langdon Stewart started this program and it's about finding young people and getting them away for periods of time to help them discover their own giftedness, to help them discover what God might be calling them to do in the short, medium and long term of their life. And within all of that is an encouragement for them to give consideration to vocational ministry, uh, if not for life, certainly for a season. But within that is a training for ministry for life, regardless of what their vocation is. So Langdon got that started, um, got it cemented within the EE um, band of ministry initiatives. And then Mitch and Dean, Mitch and Ashley have picked up where Langdon finished off and they're now taking it to that next level. Hey Fig Tree, Mitch and Ash here coming to you from sunny Florida. Uh, we are just really grateful to be a part of the mission conference again this year. Even though we are disappointed, it can't be in person um, like I'm sure most of you are. Uh, I was definitely looking forward to being home and seeing you all and seeing my friends and family. Uh, but God is still good. And we're praying that this year's conference will just be a huge encouragement to you all. For those of you who don't know us yet, uh, we're the coordinators of EE Changemakers, which is a ministry program of evangelism explosion. Uh, we love investing in young people for the sake of the gospel. And we're excited to be able to share the vision for our program this coming week. Uh, our video will be premiering on YouTube, so be sure to go check it out. Uh, thank you, you guys, for your continued generosity for us and for all the mission partners. Uh, we are just so blessed by your partnership, and we look forward to giving you a bigger update uh, next week. So stay safe and God bless. Mission is so important. It's really important here locally, but it's also important around the world. So we're glad that you could join us for this focus on world mission. As you're watching these videos during this week, we're asking you to respond. We're asking you to respond in two ways. The first is to pray. We would love you to pray for mission around the world. We'd love you to pray and ask God that his gospel would be changing lives around the world as he promised it would. And we'd love you to pray for our mission partners. So if you jump on the website, you can download a PDF under the section in World Missions Conference. You'll find that PDF and it's got details and prayer points for our mission partners. That's the first way. The second way we'd love you to respond is through giving. This is the time of year where we focus on raising support for our mission partners. Now, I've got to say, we recognise in these COVID times, some people are under severe financial stress. And by no means we want to put any pressure on you at all. In fact, uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, he says, Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, not under any compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So if you've got that ability and you're able to give, we'd love you to do that. And you can do that either through direct debit or we have a new system uh, that we've set up through the tithing app on the Fig Tree website. And it gives you the option to simply click on the option that you'd like to give to. And we've also got a special mission fund that we would love you to give to because we know that under these times, our mission partners are also in a big strain, so we don't want them to miss out either. And putting into that mission fund will encourage those funds to be distributed uh, according to the needs of the partners. Each of the weeknights for the week at 7.30 on Fig Tree TV, um, you can also watch a special presentation where there'll be a lot more information about each of our mission partners and we'll hear from them directly. Um, so that'll be really good. So that's 7.30 each night, Monday through to Friday of the missions conference. And after that, you can watch them at any time. And you can find out about all of the information of the, uh, the missions conference when everything is on, uh, who's speaking when and what that content will be by going to the Fig Tree Anglican Church website and it's all up there.
Tonight we've heard stories and in this week we celebrate the many na nations of the world. But it's funny, you know, it was just a couple of days ago, my youngest son came to me with a question about the Bible and a time before uh, many nations were known. Uh, it's a good question. I thought it would serve us all. So I've asked him if you'd ask it to us once more. Okay. You know how God always uses grace when, when people sin in the Bible? When do you think God uses grace in the Tower of Babel? Well, I told you it's a good question. And uh, as I thought about this story of the Tower of Babel, if you've ever heard it, some people uh, had what you'd have to admit is something of an admirable vision. From the ground up, they were going to build a tower. They had a vision to make a name for themselves and uh, the sky would be the limit, quite literally. They wanted to do something great. So my son asks, how does God show grace in that? And I said to him, well, I think in three ways God shows grace. I'm going to call them a pause, a promise, and a Pentecost. And I know that last word is beyond the scope of a nine-year-old, but when you're a pastor's kid, you learn to deal with it. So look, they're going to build this tower, and they want to make something great. But God gets involved, and in his grace, he doesn't simply come down and punish them. No, he confuses their language. He literally pauses their project because what they intended for greatness, he in turns, intends for glory. He's going to do something even bigger than they possibly imagined with their lives. And so he comes along, confuses their language, which must have been tricky. You imagine you're building this tower and you're like, hey, pass me the hammer. And your mate who'd been working with is like, no, speak of the English. Uh, and so the whole thing stops. Not only does the project stop, but the people are scattered. Why would I call it a pause? Well, because immediately afterwards in Genesis, we read of an ancestral table or a genealogy where God shows, hey, 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 I'm not against people growing. I still have a plan for how there's going to be a great people, but I'm pausing this project because it's not all that it could be in your life. Then God speaks to a man called Abraham. Here's the promise and here is his grace again. God says to Abraham, I want you to leave where you live, go somewhere else, and through you, I'm going to bless all the nations. What God's saying is, the blessing I bring to this world is never going to be located to one nation. No, Abraham, you're going to be a wandering guy, and through you, I'm going to rescue everyone. Of course, fast forward history, many, many thousands of years, and we come to Pentecost. And here is this moment where the church is born. And as the Holy Spirit descends, the one gospel, the announcement that Jesus is Lord and all people can be rescued in him, is heard by every single person in their own native language. So a people who wanted to build their own name, who are chasing greatness, God says, I'm going to pause that. In my grace, I'm going to bring you to a space of glory. To a wandering guy, God says, here's a promise for how I'm going to build a kingdom bigger than any nation could imagine. And at Pentecost, he says, in Jesus Christ, my announcement is that people from every tribe, tongue, and nation will not be united by being exactly the same or the same language. No, instead, I'm going to speak that they would hear my truth and share my truth that all people of all nations could be united in Christ. And so this week... As we share this missions conference and think about planting hope, I'm praying for myself and for you that we might have a moment of pause, a moment of promise, and even a moment of Pentecost, where God might just bring a disruption on all our lives to think about our time, talent, treasure, and even our life's trajectory, and think, has God got something glorious in store for me as part of his mission where I was only seeking great? I hope that this week we might remember the promise of God where he brought salvation and blessing to all people through a wandering guy like Abraham. And I'm praying that this week we might have a Pentecost moment where wherever we're situated, whatever we do, whatever language we speak, we might hear the voice of God calling us into his kingdom and calling us to be partners and sharers in our own unique way, in our own unique supporting method as partners in his mission. So I hope this missions conference can be wonderful for you as we think about planting hope. God bless. Well, Ian.
Um, I'm excited about the week. Um, I am looking forward to being able to engage in it as we as we will be able to this year from the uh, luxury of our lounge rooms. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing from each of our mission partners each weeknight at 7.30 and hearing their stories and, as you said, being inspired by them to continue on with that which uh, Jesus has called me to and, uh, and which Jesus has called all of the people within our congregation to. So with that, Ian, can you just um, get our week started by bringing all of this before the Lord and pray for uh, the things happening throughout the week as well as uh, our congregation as they engage with um, God's call to mission. Thanks, Pete. Love to. And as I pray, a big uh, shout out of thanks to the missions committee who've put this week on. Let me pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can stop again in our calendar uh, and really be mindful of the work that you are doing around the world. Uh, Father, it's a different year. Uh, Help us uh, think engage, watch, pray, be generous. Lord, we do pray for our mission partners. We thank you for them. Many people around the world, Pete's already shared about Ethiopia, are struggling. There's heartache everywhere. People are hurting around the globe. Father, may it be that through the role that we play, even here in downtown Fig Tree, may it be that others know that we're behind them, we support with them, we're walking with them. And Father, may good come from this week yet again, as you've done year in, year out. And Father, may we all rejoice as we hear of the stories of what is going on around the world. And may it truly inspire us yet again to keep our eyes fixed on you. And Lord, use this week again to raise up workers for the harvest. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just uh, get so excited about the way our church has this long tradition of being involved in mission and I'm looking forward to this week to just being encouraged and inspired to continue that journey with all of you people again. Thank you. Uh, Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, It's been great to have you. Look forward to seeing you throughout the week. Thanks again for joining us for this kickoff to the World's Missions Conference. There's lots happening. We invite you to join us tomorrow where our guest speaker Simon Gillam is going to speak. And then reminder that each night at 7.30 p.m. you can watch a presentation from each of our partners. You can watch it live or watch it later. So we look forward to seeing you uh, during this week.